1944. You just parachuted into Normandy on D-Day. You lost all your gear in the jump and the enemy is in every direction. What do you do? No idea? Me neither. But Dick Winters knew what to do. Not only did he survive, but he ended up leading his company for Europe to Hitler's eagle's nest in World War II. In this video, you'll learn how to be a good leader like Dick Winters was, as we go over the 5 powerful and effective leadership skills Dick Winters used to lead his men in World War II. You've probably heard of Dick Winters if you watched the excellent HBO TV series Band of Brothers, or read the book by Stephen Ambrose. If not, I highly recommend both if you're interested in history or the military, and especially if you're interested in leadership. At the end of the video, we'll go over my own experience as a process engineer in pharmaceutical manufacturing and how I try to apply these five lessons from Dick Winters. I'd like to think that I've applied them well over the years and that any mistake was totally not my fault. Liar! So what made Dick Winters such a good leader? Number one, he led from the front. A phrase that has become somewhat of a cliché nowadays, as every company mandated leadership training guru mentions leading from the front as an important aspect of leadership. However, they never fully explain what it means. Does it mean being on the front line 100% of the time? Does it mean you have to be buddies with your subordinates? Does it mean you have to do your subordinates job? What leading from the front means, at least in my opinion, is leading by example. Winter served as an example to his troops, because when he was on the front line, he showed them what to do and how to do it. But does this mean he was always in the front and fighting like an enlisted soldier? No, of course not. He only led from the front when it was necessary. For example, during the Battle of Carantan, Winter's company was pinned down by machine gun fire and the men wouldn't move. Winters, realizing they were sitting ducks, proceeded to stand up and start kicking his soldiers and yelling at them to keep moving and to follow him. He later commented that he thought it was a miracle that he wasn't cut down by that machine gun. He said, With me running around on the road like a wild man, the German machine gun seemed to zero in on me. I was a wide open target. The bullet snapped by and glanced off the road all around me. He managed to get his company moving forward and eventually led the Germans out of Carantan. One of his sergeants, Floyd Talbert, wrote a letter to Winters after the war. Seeing you in the middle of that road wanting to move was too much. You were my total inspiration. All of my boys felt the same way. Winters standing up and risking his life inspired his troops to get up and take action. This is what leading by example means, and this is what leading from the front means. Number 2. He was extremely humble. Dick Winters came from a Pennsylvania Dutch household, one that prized humility and hard work above all else. When he was selected for officer candidate school, he said, It's about time, I'm lit fam. Just kidding. Dick considered himself very fortunate to be selected to be an officer, as he was only a private with less experience than his peers. However, Winters wasn't selected by accident. He was actually better than most officer candidates in his class, despite his lack of experience. When he became an officer, he never let the power get into his head. He would still eat lunch with the same people he had lunch with before he became an officer. Other officers frowned upon his relation with the enlisted men, but this didn't bother Winters at all. Ego was never an issue with Dick. He never took credit for himself, and instead passed it to his men. After a skirmish in Holland, in which Winters personally led an attack on a German force twice larger than his, he had to write a report. He intentionally didn't use the word I a single time. He wanted to ensure that all the credit went to his men. Objectively, Winters deserved just as much credit as his men as he personally led the attack and organized it. And even though he never brought up his own performance in the report, he was still promoted to battalion executive officer. Number 3. He was very disciplined. Winter's discipline is his most famous characteristic, and has become almost synonymous with him. Discipline was instilled in him from a very young age. He never drank alcohol or swore. He played many sports and worked as a student. When he was in officer candidate school, he knew he didn't have the experience like the other candidates. He compensated this by doubling down on his studying and physical exercise. This sentiment didn't only last in officer candidate school. He continued to push himself even in England. While other officers would frequent bars and get drunk, Winters would stay behind and study military manuals. And despite training intensely throughout the day at the base, he spent his free time doing push-ups and he would run a couple of miles every day. He is often quoted with, physical stamina is the root of mental toughness. Which means that by staying disciplined, 
he would be more alert while making life and death decisions. His level of discipline thus saved the lives of his men on more than one occasion during the war. Number 4. He stood up for himself. While in England, on the eve of the invasion, he had an altercation with Captain Sobel, Easy Company's commander. Sobel was hated in the company and Winters wasn't. Sobel knew this and resented Winters for it. So he tried to give Winters an infraction out of spite. Winters was going to inspect the latrine at 10 am as he was ordered. When he arrived, he found Sobel inspecting the latrines. He inspected the latrines anyway, and after about 45 minutes, he was delivered a note saying he did not inspect the latrines at 9.45 am. When he confronted Sobel about this, Sobel simply said he changed the order, telephoned and sent a runner. Winters had no telephone in his room, and no runner had reached him. He had a choice between accepting the punishment of staying on the base without a weekend pass, or to request a trial by courts martial. Winter spent his weekends on the base anyway, reading or playing sports, but he decided to stand up for himself and requested a trial by courts martial. Because of this, Winters was transferred to battalion mess, but Winters' transfer sparked a mutiny against Sobel, after which Sobel was transferred to parachute school and Winters was returned to Easy Company. Easy Company's NCOs didn't want to go into combat with Sobel, especially if Winters wasn't around. Number 5. He took time for self-reflection. Winters frequently made time for self-reflection. While he was in England, he used to sit on a bench in the cemetery to enjoy the peace and quiet. Solitude gave him a chance to reflect on his performance. He would ask himself some hard-hitting questions. Winters did this often. After the Battle of Carentan, he assessed his performance objectively. And even though the mission was a success, he could not help but think that if he had done just a tiny bit better job, more of his men would have come home. Obviously, he was too hard on himself as he wasn't to blame for the deaths of his soldiers. However, the strict self-reflection kept him grounded and inspired him to get better. Speaking of self-reflection, let's take a journey through the many many mistakes I made when I was a shift leader in manufacturing. Let's start with leading from the front. I'd say I did this fairly well. I took the time to learn my subordinates' jobs and provided support whenever a problem arose. One mistake that I did make was that I didn't push them enough and gave them too much slack because I was close to them. Now I know it's sometimes okay to push your subordinates within reason so they can reach their full potential. But to do that, you have to stand up and lead by example like Winters did. I don't really need to reflect on number two since I'm the humblest person you'll ever meet. You're not known to be a humble man, but I wonder... I think I am actually humble. I think I'm much more humble than you would understand. When I started working, I thought I was the best and smartest technologist in the world. Until I got humbled. Mistakes are a very good remedy for arrogance. After a couple of hundred mistakes, I learned to keep my ego in check. What I learned was, there's always someone better out there than me. Regarding discipline, I've gotten more disciplined over the years and don't really have a problem with staying physically fit. I do, however, have a very large mouth and I can't stop flapping my app. Don't make my mistake. Don't antagonize anyone directly, however big Bruh. and little they may be. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Remain neutral and civil, and don't get riled up, it's just a game and we all have to play it. That said, I've made some progress here, and I've learned to keep my mouth shut. Occasionally. Other than the self-reflection I'm doing right now, I often spend time reflecting on my performance. And the more I do it, the more I can objectively assess how I'm doing my job. I couldn't do this properly when I started working, because I was younger and I had a big ego. But as I get more experienced, I get better at it. And lastly, standing up for myself. This is another thing that comes with experience, and I stood up for myself only a handful of times. However, when I started, something always kept me from taking the leap. Luckily, this wore off after I spent some time working in an extremely hostile environment under a terrible boss. My only regret is that I never stood up for myself against the abusive boss. But maybe it's for the best. He lost his position in the end, and I learned a valuable lesson. There's a limit to standing up for yourself though. I don't do it often, and I only react to actual abusive behavior, not when I can't get Friday off because of an anime convention. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to know more about Dick Winters, I've linked some great books below. So which of these leadership techniques will you try out first? Will you start by getting more disciplined, or will you start practicing self-reflection every day? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in more videos like this, for example learning from historical or fictional figures, leave a comment with your suggestion below. Also remember to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.